And now let's hear what students have to say about this historic milestone in India's space journey. We are so excited to see the launch of our new satellite. It may be seen as the LVM satellite, LVM-3 satellite. Uh, here we can, I can see many different schools for uh, came here to watch the uh, launch of this new satellite. We've been waiting quite a while for this and yeah, we wish all the best to all the ISRO scientists. Nearly uh, 320 people from our school have come here to watch the rocket launch and we are actually very grateful to have this opportunity. It is uh, something that we thought as a miracle but anyhow they made us come here. I am actually very excited to come here and witness this rocket launch. And joining me on the broadcast today is uh, Mr. Ratan Srivastav. He is a space expert. So, very warm welcome to DD India News. Uh, big day indeed for India's space sector. Um, launch of LVM 3M6 and the launch of heaviest payload ever from Indian soil. We will talk about it in a while, but going back in history a bit, from carrying rocket parts on a bicycle and bullock cart to now ruling the space, how do you assess Bharat's journey uh, in space sector, sir? So, uh, Siddharth, thank you for this. And... Uh I would say it's it's a very it's been a very long journey. Yeah. And what makes it unique is this that this is a journey powered by Indian engineers and Indian scientists, hmm. which is fully indigenous. Uh, from that place where we used to carry rockets in the cycles and do you know orbital suborbital I would say launches to ensure that we are able to get the capacity and the capability to to launch the rockets that we are launching today has been a long journey, but it is a journey which has been marked by a lot of sacrifices made by the Indian scientists and the engineers, whether it's from ISRO, also from DRDO and the Indian industry. Without the Indian industry becoming a part of this journey, this would have not been possible to do it indigenously. So having said that, uh, GS, uh, uh, the LVM-3 rocket, as we know, is powered by the indigenous cryogenic engine which is a huge cry from what we were probably doing earlier with PSLV's 3s and SLV's 3s. Yeah. To reach this capability, we have entered the elite club of countries which have developed their own capability for heavy lift capacity with their indigenous technology. So right. cryogenic engine, is, as we know, it's a, it has two, LVM3 has two cryogenic engines, one and two. And Vikas engines have been developed indigenously in India uh, at the at the VSSC at Mahendragar, where the launches have been done earlier to prove. In fact, in this year itself, so that you may know, this is the second successful LVM-3 Bahubali launch. Mm. The first launch we had in November when we put the GSAT 7R into orbit, which was a 4,400 kilogram, uh, 4,400 ton uh, uh, satellite, which went into into the into into the orbit in GTO actually, which is uh, which is probably one of the I would say smoothest launches we have seen in GTO or in GTO. Mm. Uh, now today's or launch of 6.5 ton Bluebird Block Two or Bluebird. Uh, six, whatever you want to call it, of ASD Space Mobile, we have entered a new territory, which is to launch a, such a heavy, or rather heaviest till now satellite of 6.5 ton mm. into low Earth orbit, which is in, in fact more difficult mm. because to pre precisely inject it into the orbit mm. where it should be able to have the capacity mm. from uh, of uh, you know of delivering uh, communications, which is to say including video, voice uh, to. Uh, to about 120 Mbps mm. and 10,000 megahertz capacity, mm. it's amazing. Definitely. You just mentioned sir, it, it's, it's, it's difficult to launch that into the low Earth orbit. Why is it so? So in lower, lower Earth orbit, because uh, the, the, uh, this satellite is especially very, I would say, important from the point of view that it has a 2,400, uh, you know, uh, wide uh, swath, which is the, which is the a a a array that they have. That array itself is is equal to almost all the satellites that Bluebird has launched till now, and this is why it gives you the kind of uh, reach it gives to uh, to, uh, to to the capacity of ten thousand megahertz, uh, giving broadband services in the intended area where it is uh, working, which is in the United States. Mm. Uh, and, uh, to have this kind of uh, comfort and the I would say confidence on Indian launch vehicle. Is, is something that we need to be proud of, whereas, yeah. uh, whereas we, this is a very competitive market as well, as we know. 
Definitely, and uh, we all are proud, sir, uh, looking at India's space journey and the space sector and the way it is progressing right now. Uh, so, talking about the launch of LVM-3 M6, you know, launch of heaviest payload ever uh, from Indian soil, uh, I want to ask you, what does it tell about Bharat's growing capability in space tech and the kind of approach toward achieving new milestones and Atnirbharta or self-reliance? So as the Prime Minister tweeted today, and uh, we spoke about Siddharth also a few minutes back, that this is a completely indigenous uh, indigenous vehicle. Mm -hmm. in, in the sense, uh, right from the solid state boosters to the electronics to the cap to the construction of the vehicle, mm -hmm. it's all been done by Indian industry and uh, in, whether in the public sector or in the private sector. Mm -hmm. Both have played a very good role in developing this. This is possible only when ISRO involves the industry at the uh, at the development stage itself because then you get co-opted into the design development of the vehicle and you know what is required to be done at what stage of time so that the supply chains are also secured it's it's a very complex process uh, and right. this means that is this means that isro is not treating uh, industry as vendors but as partners which is a which has i would say putting a lot of confidence into its partners and ensuring that these uh, the, the the components which are required for this including the Vikas engines are prepared in time for the launch to be done and also perfectly done so that there is no question of a failure in this because a failure is not accepted when you are doing commercial launches. It really impacts your reputation. Definitely. Uh, Mr. Srivastava, I want to ask you, being a ex space expert, how do you analyze the fact that what has changed over the years which has put India's space sector now uh, on the global map and everyone is looking at it? You know, beat collaborations, uh, uh, beat any other collaborations and uh, you know the way the Indian space sector is progressing what factors are there what has changed over the years so that if we start talking about the kind of changes which has happened in the last 10 years hmm. we probably need another show for that <laughs> but, <laughs> but probably you know we can suffice it to say that uh, uh, it has been it has been a sea change starting from the attitude of the of the of the government and the policy makers to ensure hmm. that we are uh, we are doing the kind of thing uh, that we should be doing as a space faring nature hmm. which means to say there is a role for the industry and there is a role for agencies like isro hmm. uh, we 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 have been planning for a gaganyaan we you know for a very very long time we've yes. been planning for the vikas engine for a very long time we've yeah. been planning for having our station I mean, the, the, these are the things that were, we just kept on hearing. It never actually, you know, translated into something that we can say is, is something that we are going to do yeah. in a different time frame. Mm -hmm. Because when you need to do in a different time frame, you need the policy enablers, you need the agencies in place, mm -hmm. and you need to have clearly defined roles for all the stakeholders. So, uh, so if, if ISRO has to be freed up, for doing the kind of work that we are planning to do this i mean for example we have we have had chandrayaan we have had mangalyaan we have had the uh, uh, we have had uh, the probe for the sun mm -hmm. the solar probe that we have had and we are also planning missions to other planets including uh, the gaganyaan and the bharat space station right this means to say that the agency has to be freed up to do this kind of work this mm -hmm. kind of research and engineering and planning mm -hmm. and and the launches and uh, other other i would say commercial activities could be hived off to another agency so we have nsil for that today the nsil is the commercial arm to do all this uh, you know commercial work as well as we also need capacity to have more launch vehicles as well as satellites so we have we have two startups which are almost at the stage of orbital launch now uh, we know that uh, both uh, uh, both the companies are now probably you know ready to do the first launch vikram of course uh, is going to skyroot is ready to do the launch of vikram and they are probably going to do it in a couple of months mm -hmm. uh, we also know Agni agnikul is also ready with the launch vehicles so these we need more launch vehicles we need more i would say players in the mm -hmm. uh, players in india if we need to become a space economy if we need to mm -hmm. reach somewhere what the targets we have picked for 2047 Definitely. so from eight seven or eight billion dollars we need to mm -hmm. move much, much so more. so what am i getting of what you are saying is that approach has changed and a special focus uh, that was given to this particular sector uh, the policy now, the policy has changed and okay. uh, the rules have been defined okay and uh, and there is a there is a fixed timeline in place what we need to do okay. it's not something that we will think we will plan that that yeah that approach right. is gone right 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 and 
uh, Mr. Srivastava, there are missions and then there are cost effective missions. So it's not about just getting the capability to launch rockets, but with lesser cost also. How does Bharat stand out on this front? Your reaction? So Siddharth, uh, as you know, we are famous for our frugal engineering. Yeah. For the cost of a Hollywood movie, we could do a Chandrayaan. Yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, the reason is this, that uh, we uh, we have been able to develop everything indigenously. Mm -hmm. Had we relied on foreign engineering sources, mm -hmm. there would have been a cost because obviously nobody was going to give us anything free of cost. Yeah, yeah, There's a profit course. motive involved in it. Mm. But when you do it in India, indigenously involving Indian industry and the Indian engineering uh, engineers, engineering scientists, as well as I would say, uh, try to make it affordable within the budget that the government is going to give you. Mm -hmm. So there is, of course, there's an element of patriotism involved in it. So profit, obviously, we need, but we do not need, uh, you know, I would say kind of excessive profits that somebody would profit uh, from us by selling something. Okay. So if you're indigenously developing, there's a pipeline, you would work to, you work in partnership with the ISRO, then I think uh, this is one of the th reasons that uh, we've been able to keep our costs low. Definitely. And I like it when you say that there's a element of patriotism in this. Uh, Mr. Shwasa? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. When we talk about a Bharat space sector, how do you see the private players making their way here and how efficiently would it contribute to the country's space economy? Uh, Siddharth, I think the private players have been ab initio involved in a lot of uh, work that the ISRO has, development work that ISRO has been doing. Mm -hmm. And this is not from today, it's from the times of PSLV. PSLV, you may um, be, you may know more than about 96%, 90 to 98% of PSLV is outsourced from the industry, whether it is mm -hmm. the private industry or the public sector. Mm -hmm. So companies like Larson and Tubro, company, uh, Godridge, uh, Anant Technologies have been involved working with the ISRO for a, for decades actually, hmm. uh, and they have they have re, they have reasonably matured to a stage where they are not only uh, supplying to ISRO or vendors to ISRO, but they are also uh, they are also able to export components. Hmm. But they I believe they but I believe they got the much needed platform now. It was not they, there earlier. Absolutely. Do you so agree? The the platform is there. The hmm. capacity is there. Hmm. The, the capacity has to be developed only once they have the capital capital to do it. Yeah. You need capex. The private right. industry needs capex to develop capacity. Right. So right. that capex is not available. Hmm. The, the the capacity is available. The hmm. policy is there. The enablers are in place. Hmm. And uh, the 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 kind of startups that we have seen. Hmm. I mean, ten years back you could count you know startups on your fingers, maybe in single digits. Today we are reaching almost 400 startups, and it's not like this that the startups are there just just for the, uh, you know, for the for yeah, the. For the yeah, yeah. I mean, the government is equally supporting the startups, and that's government the reason. Government is equally supporting, and they are here to what solve the problem. We are seeing they what are we are seeing it's because problems. of that. Yeah, you're right, absolutely. And months back we saw the joint collaboration of ISRO and NASA launching an Earth observing satellite, NASA. Yes, you know, tells a lot about how the world is looking at India for collaborations. How impactful are these collaborations, sir, according to you? And in giving a push to Bharat's already advancing space sector. Very quickly, sir. So, uh, um, as the Prime Minister has said, I mean, this is fueled by India's youth mm -hmm. and, the, uh, and, the, and the push for Atmanirbhar Bharat. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, uh, the push for Atmanirbhar Bharat and India's, I would say, aspirations of the youth are definitely a driving force. But, but at the same time, we have to earn our spurs. If we are not able to, uh, if we are not able to deliver commercially to whatever we have promised to our partners, then people won't come to us. They would probably go to somewhere else. Maybe our cost of uh, launch is low, mm. but our rate of success of launch is also very high. So if you have a low cost launch and you have a rate, high rate of success and you have a platform provided by the government in terms of the agencies which have demarcated for the kind of jobs that they have to supposed to do, I, I think it's the right recipe uh, to, get, to understand that the, that the international partners would have confidence on us and uh, space is the only way. Uh, space is the only thing which does not frontiers. There are no frontiers in space. So as long as we can collaborate, I mean, the collaboration we are doing with America is on the other side. The collaboration with other partners, such as European partners, the Japanese people, the Japanese partners, and of course, uh, uh, we have we have worked in the past very successful with Russians as well. So I think we have kept our uh, options open. And uh, we have worked with whoever we have been able to, you know, uh, get benefit of, as well as uh, support our commercial ambitions to ensure that the 
budget that we have is utilized for development purposes and the commercial revenue that we earn is used for other purposes. Definitely. It was wonderful having conversation with you, Mr. Ratan Srivastava. Thank you so much for joining in on DD India News. Thank you. Thank you, Siddharth. Always a pleasure.